Hello, it's Dave Palmer. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, what we're going to talk about today is this concept of ESPN plus DC with a little bit of gender that's super important on the AP exam. This can make the difference between scoring okay and really scoring well. So let's get going. So what does the ESPN DC stand for? So what it means is the E stands for economic, S is social, P is political, N is kind of this little trick, it's a little play on words, it's environmental, D is demographic, and C is cultural. And the last thing is gender, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, and I've got a slide dedicated to that, because that's a big theme within the human geography course. So let's talk about economics first. Now, the key to answering something with economics, on a question they could ask you to say, um, describe an economic impact of some event on the test. And so with this, you want to be talking about dollars and jobs. Now, there's other things that you can talk about, but you're really safe if it's mentioned in, if there's a cost or an unemployment or a type of job, you're in really good shape. Um, you can talk about capitalism, or the economic systems, free market, socialism, or command economy. Do not talk about democracy. It's not economic. Our economic system is a mixed economy or a free market economy. Dem democracy is not an economic system. That's a political system. Now, GDP per capita, gross domestic product, that's the value of all goods and services produced within a country. It's kind of a measurement of wealth, but it's really a measurement of productivity. Um, you can talk about financial status, rich, poor, stocks, income. These are all economic things. Now, level of development. There's economic level development and there's social level development. So you've got to be very clear about this. So when you're talking about levels of development, you can talk about... Um, Emerging economies, highly developed country, less developed country, but you want to frame it in a way that you're talking usually about income, GDP per capita, things like that. Um, availability resources, physical or human capabilities, human uh, labor is a good one. Uh, types of jobs, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and the structure of the economy, that's a very good thing to discuss if you're talking about economics. Um, costs, this one is a big one, costs in money the cost of resources the cost of labor transportation costs housing costs and when as soon as you put the word cost on there throws it into the economic realm revenue or sales tax structure or taxes paid not paid um la land value in money or trade when you're talking about trade and interaction of giving goods and services back to each other that is very economic the next one is social Social relates to the conditions in which people live or what they may or may not have access to within a society. Now, this is similar to culture, but I'm going to draw a distinction between the two. On the test, I don't think you're going to be asked to draw a distinction between the two, but I'm going to kind of, if you're talking about social, this is going to be super safe zone. You're talking about, do you have access to education? Do people have access to health care? Is there a quality and inequality between ethnicity and groups of people within the society? Is racism present? Is there social injustice going on? Um, do people have access to quality housing? Crime rates are a good one. Now here's gender. We're going to talk about gender a lot later, but gender equity or inequity, that is a social issue. Now, one of the most common elements of society is the structure of family. So the family structure is a big social element. That's a safe area. Uh, literacy rates, the ability of people to read and write up to an eighth grade level. That relates to education. Persecution. Now, persecution can be both social and political, so be, you, know, you can use it, but um, be precise in how you talk about it. Privilege. Certain groups within a people, within a society, have, have a benefit of privilege within their society. Sense of community, how people live, already mentioned that. Interactions between groups. Social has to do with interactions. How do different groups within the society interact? Religious and ethnicity and freedoms. Um, that, that's a good one to talk about with persecution. Are certain groups within a society um, persecuted or have inequality? Um, usually when we talk about um, social, we're usually talking about at the country or society level or a bigger community scale. It's not perfect, and I know it, but we'll talk more about culture later. Political. Political relates to government. So if you're talking about stuff related to government, the type of government, is it a federal? Is it a unitary state? Hey, democracy is fine to talk about here, but not capitalism. Democracy is our form of government. Laws, policies, treaties. 
These are the things that governments do. They make the rules. And when you're talking about laws and policies, you're in super safe ground. Political parties, but there's not a lot of political party discussion in this class. So you can talk about it and it's fair game, but it's, it's not a big topic. Wars are political, especially between wars between states or countries or groups of people. Boundaries of countries, states, nations, cities, gerrymandering, these are all political boundaries that are being drawn. That's fair game. Discriminatory laws, court systems and judicial systems, very fair. Police and military, army, navy, that's, that's usually considered in the political realm. Taxation, how much does a government charge its people for taxes? Fair game. Now, this one, women in power or leadership. You'll see this in gender, but when you talk about women in power or leadership or in Congress as presidents, that's very much political. Voting, elections, political for sure. Congressional districts, autonomy. Now, this next wave has to do with independence movements within countries. Um, countries seeking autonomy or self-determination. Those are political movements. Imperialism. Devolution, giving power from a higher level of government to a lower level of government. Really good political one. Balkanization or fragmentation of state, a country falling apart and fracturing. And then centripetal and centrifugal forces. Now this you have to be careful with. By their nature, they're political, but you can start to move into cultural or social realms with this. So be careful with this, but centripetal forces are the things that unify the country and the government. That's political centripetal or centrifugal forces, things that are tearing it apart, okay? Just be careful how you talk about it. Environmental. This relates to nature and the physical geography. Um, and one of the most common things when you're talking about environment is some type of pollution. So you've got some sort of pollution here. Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, noise pollution, light pollution. Any of those is fair game, but you have to say what type of pollution you're talking about. You just can't say pollution. We've never given a point for that, so make sure you give us a type of pollution. You can also refer to things like climate, the resources, the vegetation, the soil, the animals, the landforms, bodies of water. These are all um, environmental. Sustainable development. Now, that's a, a, a big concept that overarches the whole course. But there's a lot of environmental aspects in that. Are we preserving the earth and our resources for future generations? It's a great idea to talk about, but you have to talk about it in context with using some of these other terms I've mentioned. Environmental issues. Human environment interaction. How do people impact the environment and back and forth? Very important idea, and it's very fair game if you talk about both sides, such as natural hazards or disasters, such as hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, and yeah, pandemics, the stuff that's going on right now. That is very much in the environmental realm. Ecosystems, ecology, fair game. And obviously, we're just talking about things related to nature. Demographic is a really important word, and it's used a lot. And it relates to these two things, population and migration. You had a whole unit about that. That whole unit is called, could just be called demographics, but it's population and migration. So you need to make sure that you understand if you're asked to discuss a, a demographic statistic or a demographic impact that you know what that means. And it's all things relating to population. Better answers relate to things like birth rate and death rate. Remember that demographic transition model? It might as well be called the population change model. So because it deals with births and deaths and total population. Um, you can also talk about distribution, like where do people live in an area? That's demographic. Density, how many people per square mile? That's popular, that's demographic. Natural increase in growth rate. Uh, the difference between natural increase and growth rate, growth rate includes migration. Natural increase is just birth rates and um, death rates, so make sure you understand that. Um, life expectancy. Life expectancy is basically a mortality statistic, like how long is a person expected to live? And you can look at gender with this and male versus female life expectancy. So you got some gender stuff in there, but it is definitely demographic. Infant mortality rates, fertility rates, the number of babies that a woman is likely to have in her lifetime. Dependency ratio, both the elderly dependency ratio as well as the youth dependency ratio. So make sure you talk about either one when you're specific about this, over 65 or under age 15. Sex and gender of the population, male versus female. Caring capacity, how many people can a society hold? Um, Malthus talks about that. Age and sex graphs, that's another fancy way of saying the population pyramids. Okay. Um, 
marital status, married, single, whatever, that's, that's demographic. We don't talk a ton about that, but it is relevant. And then some maybes. Education, religion, ethnicity, race, yes, but be careful here. You got to talk about population, maybe the percent of an ethnicity within a population. That's population. But if you start talking about the cultural beliefs and values, you're out of bounds and you won't get the demographic point. So I told you I'd come back to cultural. So social and cultural, on the test, I don't think we'll ask you to differentiate the two, but I want to make sure you understand them. Culture relates to the beliefs and values of a group of people and the complete way of life of a group of people. So things that are fair game, religion, ethnicity, race, language, beliefs and attitudes. Those are all things that are super, super cultural. Fashion, the clothing that you wear, how you eat, what you eat, the habits that you have on a daily life. These are very cultural traits of individuals and groups of people. The history, sex and gender views. How do different societies view people and different cultures view male versus female and the roles associated with that? The music that people live, listen to. You're going to most likely see architecture is being able to identify religious structures, um, but architectural style is reflective of culture. And then also pop, folk, indigenous peoples, each of these different cultural elements and even globalized culture is an element that you can talk about here. It's very similar to social, so I don't think it has to differentiate, but I do want you to get a sense of these two. Now, gender relates to the treatment and the condition in which gender is addressed and treated within each society. So basically, we're talking about mostly about how are women treated. You also talk about men, but most of the society's men are preferentially treated. So we usually talk about women in this context. Roles and expectations. Is there equality or is there inequality? Gendered spaces. Like, where can women go and men go? Like, bathrooms today are usually gendered, but there's discussions about should that be the case? Um, economic activity. Is there a glass ceiling that limits the height that which women can go in society? Okay. Um, political power, gender empowerment, gender equality related to political power. Are they the president? Are they in Congress? Things like that. Um, education. Do women have equal access to education to men? There's also with migration, there's additional risk for women who migrate from one country to another. There's some problems with that and some challenges related to this. Agriculture, what's the role of women in agriculture around the world? I have a video dedicated to talking about some of those things. Cultural beliefs related to um, women. Empowerment, status, males versus female, men, women, and that glass ceiling that I talked about. So gender is a great one to talk about and you will probably be asked some aspect of your question will relate to gender, the role of women or girls and the importance of educating women and girls. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to that. Where will I see ESPN DC? You'll see them on the FRQs, on the impacts. Explain a blank reason, uh, economic reason, a social reason. Identify a cultural characteristic of something, okay? Now, I want you to practice and do some practice with some friends. You can alternate with a friend or parent explaining one of the ESPN DC elements and support with three examples to show your understanding. And you should repeat this multiple times. You should review FRQs. They're in there. Some, this will be on the test in some way or form. Also, I've got a Google Doc that I've attached down below that you can use to kind of test your understanding of this. So make sure that you look at that and see how well you do. So remember the Google Doc down below. I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great day and see you next time.